All right, looks like we got some participants. We'll uh, start the meeting. Uh, just to let everybody know, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, part of the CCC requirements are it has to be recorded so I can submit it. And also we're gonna submit it to the town of Rutland afterwards so that they can display it on their YouTube account. So anyways, welcome everyone for coming uh, to our community outreach meeting. So I'd like to open it up a little bit, uh, some background about myself and my family, how we got here. And then after that, we'll get into some specifics of the facility. And then our moderator will open it up for questions. So um, I'll start with what my day job is. Um, my parents run into Higgins, started Higgins Energy Alternatives 46 years ago. And then in 1985, we expanded into Higgins Power Sports. So in that 46 years of being a small business at Barry, uh, we've moved four times and uh, we've, as we've grown the business, uh, outgrown every other place that we're in, we finally, uh, 10 years ago, started a planning process to build a new building. Eight years ago, we got into this building and uh, it's a brand new building, 34,000 square feet. Um, we designed it, had it built. Um, and uh, if you haven't seen it, it's worth the trip to Barry. Uh, at that facility, we employ about 35 people and uh, we're currently looking to expand. We need more people. Business for us has been thankfully going very well in this uh, COVID time, but things, things are busy and we need more staff. Um, for anybody not familiar with our business, we sell wood stoves, gas stoves, pellet stoves, gas grills, solar panels, lawn mowers, lawn and garden equipment, ATVs, side-by-sides, snowmobiles, tractors, slingshots, used cars. Uh, we got a lot of stuff that we sell at, at our facility. Also, in addition to that, we service service all the stoves, we service all the, the lawn mowers, the ATVs, uh, everything. So, um, and while we're not from Rutland uh, or Barry business, we've got a long list of clients from Rutland. Uh, in fact, in the last 10 years, we've had almost 1,800 people uh, purchased something from our business or had us do a, a service or repair on something that they own. So uh, certainly there is a, uh, we have a strong following in Rutland. Um, so that's my day job. Um, working there with my sister, my oldest sister, I have two sisters. Uh, my sister Jen's on the meeting tonight and uh, my parents run into Higgins. So how did I get into the world of cannabis? Um, in early 2019, I was asked to volunteer for the Town of Barry's Marijuana Advisory Committee. Um, that committee was formed to provide input to the Barry Planning Board and the Select Board and assist them with coming up with a bylaw for the Town of Barry. So I was on that, got through that. And then also in that time frame, my father and my brother-in-law, Liam, who Liam is kind of the, the farmer of the family. He's uh, been farming his whole life, uh, 10 years plus. I uh, went to Stockbridge School of Agriculture. Uh, he definitely knows his, knows his plants. So they decided to grow three acres of hemp in Barrie, um, which if you're not familiar with that is a, it became legalized in 2019 and it is used to make CBD oil. It's a non THC version of the marijuana plant. So we did that uh, and after successfully doing that, uh, we learned a lot. Uh, we uh, processed some of it. We uh, turned it into a CBD line. And after learning how to do that, we said, well, maybe we'll get into the marijuana business. Um, it's a lot of work. Marijuana is worth a little bit more than the, the hemp. So we, we decided to go that way. So in, in this whole process, I've had a, a couple of great mentors throughout this uh, process. And they've helped, helped me along the way and certainly push me and they're always checking on me to make sure I'm moving forward and, and doing the right thing. So they've been a great help. Um, and, and it's what is going to help me be able to uh, have a good dispensary here in Rutland. So, um, in early 2020, we, we started a construction of our outdoor cultivation, uh, for the marijuana and per the, the CCC, which is cannabis control commission, uh, the regulations are, it has to be totally fenced in. It has to have security cameras. We've got over 30 security cameras on the property. Uh, we've got motion sensors. We've got panic alarms, glass break detectors, etc. So 
it's it's quite the facility yeah it's gonna be a we started growing um it's gonna be we're we're hoping for a good year and uh learning learning all about the plant so um last year we didn't get our final license in time you know being an outdoor cultivation we had to we needed the weather so last year we did get our final license but it was too late to uh, start the growing process but this year things are happening so in addition to the outdoor cultivation that we have in Barry and the, the host community agreement for the Rutland dispensary, we've also received a host community agreement in Barry to start a manufacturing facility. Uh, what a manufacturing facility is, that's uh, where you turn the, the plant into the edibles, into the pre-rolls, all, all the other products that are not just a, a smokable bud. So, that's kind of what we got going on in Barry. That's what we got going on uh, in my day job. Um, it's a quick background of myself um, and what my family does uh, outside of Rutland. So now I'm gonna jump into what is our plans for this Rutland facility. So uh, a couple months ago, this was a long process uh, working with the select board and uh, they, we uh, submitted our application to the select board and along with uh, another applicant and we were chosen the and awarded the host community agreement for rutland so as part of uh the state's re licensing requirements we needed to have this community outreach meeting um it's to help people make aware of what we're doing and, and what's happening and how we plan to do this so i'll start with the location of the dispensary so the dispensary location that we have is it, it doesn't exist yet it, it needs to be built it is a um going to be a new brand new building um there's the rutland plaza right on main street across from that plaza there's martelli's garage that garage uh in between the garage and route 122 there's some pine trees there there's an old like hot dog stand and a shed that's all going to be removed and that's where this facility is going to be located um, it's a smaller facility, 1,800, 2,000 square foot building. Going to have approximately 20 parking spots there. Uh, Going to have a place for obviously the employees, the staff to park, but also clients that want to come in and purchase something. So that's where the, the location is going to be. Um, we obviously got to take down the trees. There's a dirt pile there, maybe cut into a little bit of the dirt pile. And we'll, we'll see how it looks. But I'm sure it's going to be a nice looking building when it's done. Um, that building that we're building, um, part of the CCC requirements is basically a state-of-the-art security system. That's a, a big thing for us. It's a big thing for the state is making sure none of this product is unaccounted for and gets out of this building. Um, again, just like our outdoor cultivation facility, security cameras, motion sensors, yeah, everything. Uh, in addition to that, the marijuana products, everything is going to be stored in a vault in this building it's uh, almost a bank vault it's going to be a you know key card access only very limited people to be in it um, it's going to be a very secure building very secure vault to store the marijuana product so it can't nobody's just going to bust through a window and take something out of there it's it's going to be more than that um, during the days uh, in addition to the that security aspect of things part of our host community agreement application we had to submit a very detailed security plan that had been reviewed by the select board by a bunch of members of the town and nobody came back with any questions but moving forward we will be working with the police chief to make sure that we meet all his requirements and everything's kept safe um this facility is a 21 and older facility um, whether you're an employee or a patron coming to visit it, it is only 21 and older. So no one under the age is allowed into the facility. Um, part, also as part of our host community agreement and application, we included a list of some financial commitments to the town and commitments to the community. So I'm just gonna kind of go over what, what we submitted to the town and what our plans are to you know, help benefit we know this is a hot topic business for the town, but we want to help the community in any way we can. So obviously hiring, you know, our first priority is to, to employ some Rutland residents. We're anticipating, uh, you know, 10 to 14 employees 
to, there's going to be security to the bud tenders that are at the counters dispensing the product, a manager, um, and our open hours. We plan to be open uh, 10 in the morning till nine at night. Uh, so, you know, we need staff there throughout that time. Uh, uh, one of the promotions that we plan on doing is for anyone that uh, visits another business in town, whether it's a retail or a restaurant, if they go in and purchase more than $25 from that facility, then they come to us and come in and say, hey, <clears throat> I was just at the restaurant up the road. I spent 50 bucks a lunch. Um, they give us that receipt. We'll give them 10% off on the order. So saves saves the Rutland residents some, some money and also helps uh, other businesses in town. In addition to that, uh, we plan some, you know, giving back to the community things uh, in October, coat drive, try to get some coats. Anybody brings in a coat, it's going to get 10% off on their purchase. Uh, holiday season, offer 10% discount to the patrons uh, if they bring in gifts for the community. And uh, also on the inside of this place, we're going to need some stuff to hang on the wall. So Possibly some local artists want to come in and hang their artwork on the wall, showcase what they've got going on, um, promote them, promote us. Also, donations to local nonprofits in town. You know, we can work with uh, food pantries, uh, Rutland Fireworks, I know is pretty big over there. Maybe we get some funds we can help with this show. Um, so that's kind of helping the community. Um, as far as uh, financial uh, commitments to the town, what, where the town's going to benefit in this. Uh, part of our host community agreement is a community impact fee, which is 3%. It's uh, a five-year program that we've signed up with for the town of Rutland. Um, there's 3% right there, which comes from the gross sales of the facility. In addition to that, <clears throat> the town gets a 3% sales tax on all the products that are sold out of that facility. So that'll add up. Uh, obviously a new building that we're putting up, that's going to increase the, the um, tax revenue in the town. We'll be paying taxes, obviously, on the new property. Also, we, uh, we're planning on donating, donating a $10,000 donation to the town, to the general fund, and it can be used for whatever the town the select board feels is the best use of that money. Um, and one last thing, the Rutland Police Department, we plan to contribute $5,000 to the police department and let them decide where to spend that money. So that kind of concludes uh, who we are, how we got here, how we're planning on running this dispensary. And uh, I guess at this point, we'll open it up to questions. If anybody's got questions, just feel free to either un unmute their uh, microphone or raise their hand and our moderator will get you in. I have a question about the parking lot. Um, so the Martelli garage has kind of like a back entrance that exits onto Naquag Street. Do you foresee that being a main channel that customers would use? Or do you think that they would kind of focus most of their driving to 122? I think it'll be more to 122. We'll have a, an entrance and an exit. Um, the building is kind of this, the plan that we have, it's placed right in the middle so that people can drive around the back of the building and then have an exit and, and easily get back out onto 122. Any other questions or, um, we did send out certified mail to to people. Um, I had got some emails from a couple of people with just questions about, again, the traffic, um, the driveway. And I think I answered their questions through email. Hi, Chris. How are you? Good. You? Good. I'm um, Dr. Darvish. I actually work right up the street from the uh, proposed dispensary at Carewell Dental. Um, I was uh, curious uh, because, like you were saying, the diagram that you had had for the uh, current building, it shows an in and an exit both on 122A. Is that also connecting to Naquag, which is behind that 
that's where we currently live, uh, and that's why, because we're worried about the traffic with our children. Um, right now, it's not a set in stone uh, layout. You know what we have here; it does show a, an in and an out um, as far as the access through Naquad Naquad Street. Um, the Just property in and out is on one twenty two, but the property is yeah. So the property is owned by uh, Blair. So Blair owns Martelli's. As well as 10 property, of the other adjacent and, and properties. He, and he's going to own this property that we'll be renting from him. Yeah. So it really comes down to what's his, you know, his plan for his So property. I was just concerned because when we've had to deal with people on that street in the past, we've been told it's been an issue with MassDOT because it's the old 122. So it's owned by them and they maintain it. I didn't know if they had been discussed in that because the street itself condition wise isn't very good, even in the summertime. So it's one of those things where I just didn't know if this is something that's going to be kept up by the town or is it by the state or who's involved in that at that point. As far as Naquag Street? I, yes, sir. I wouldn't be able to answer that question. I don't know whether that's a state issue or a town issue. When we dealt with the uh, city assessor, that's what they told us. Uh, that it would be me? No, no, that it's the, it's MassDOT that maintains it. So I wasn't sure if that property is something that we have to have them take a look at for as far as purposes of maintaining it or, or what, because the local DPW wouldn't touch it. I, I wouldn't be able to answer that question. That would be a question for the, either the. DPW I didn't know the architects the, had addressed that. No, it's more, you know, we've more focused on the 122 access entrance and exit. I'm not sure who's going to be responsible for taking care of Naquag Street. Okay. And as far as you said, it's going to be a highly secure facility. Does that mean you're going to be having video cameras on the externals of that building as well? Correct. Yep. Would those also be onto the adjacent properties as well? Not onto other properties. It would be just on the facility itself. And what about the exits and entrances? Just on the building itself. Got it. Thank you, sir. No problem. Any other questions, concerns, issues? Well, I guess that kind of wraps things up, wraps things up. Um, like I said, my day job, Higgins Power Sports, Higgins Energy. I'm there Tuesday to Saturday. If you ever want to drive to Barry and come visit me, answer, uh, ask some questions off camera, uh, that's where you find me. So <clears throat> I appreciate everybody coming tonight and uh, look forward to moving on. To run. I think you have one more comment. I have Chris. a question. Sure. Actually, I have two. Uh, first of all, the donations you mentioned to the police department and to the general fund, are those one-time donations or are those annual donations? Those are once a year donations for a five-year period. For a five-year period. Okay. Yep. And then second of all, my other question, uh, how do you intend to deal with uh, or contribute or otherwise um, assist with uh, causes and supporting causes that would deal with uh, addiction? Um, that is really, you know, that's not us really. Um, you know, there is in everything that goes out of this facility, um, it will have pamphlets in the, in the bag that they get, which will have resources for education, uh, answers to side effects of cannabis use, uh, resources for education on the safe cannabis consumption. That'll be in the bag with it. Um, and also the reminder that, you know, consuming this product in public is still prohibited. So there, there'll be, yeah, there'll be some stuff just with the, when they purchase something, it'll go out with it. Yeah, and that's another issue that I'm, I'm concerned with uh, as a resident of the town is that uh, that it's definitely not to, that it's not consumed. I've I've smelled it driving in my car, people in front of me before uh, many times, and I don't need any more of that in this town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is prohibited. You know, it is. And, and obviously, they'll be notified of that when they purchase something from us. Thank you. Anyone else? 
All right. Well, I appreciate everybody coming. Wait a moment. Sure, go ahead. So the what prohibits the, your customer to go out from the building and start smoking instantly? Um, I can't control what somebody does, but there will be signs on the outside of the building that says that consumption in the parking lot, consumption outside of the building is prohibited. And again, back to us putting in the bag when they leave that it's prohibited. Um, we're going to do everything that we can to, to tell people not to do it. Um, but that's all we can do. Thank you. Sure. Chris, I don't believe you mentioned what the proposed timeline was for the building to be going up. Uh, we anticipate, hopefully, again, um, I'm not actually building the building. We're Understood. finishing the building, but uh, Blair will be filing soon to start the process to get this built. Um, okay. One of the things as part of the CCC requirements is we have to submit an architectural plan. And before you can submit the architectural plan, you have to do community outreach meeting. So I had to get this done first. Has there been a traffic flow study done on the entrance and exit being in that area? I just know with the plaza there and even with the Dunkin' Donuts, the amount of congestion and traffic that the town sees because of those is exponential. Yeah. I didn't know if there's going to be a police detail that's going to be taking care of such a thing or if there is going to be a change in traffic patterns. We're definitely for the beginning part of this when we get up and running you know we don't want to you know make traffic any worse than it is in rutland um to start with it's going to be in a by, by appointment only so basically it, it would limit the amount of people coming in and out because hey at two o'clock you can come the person arrives grabs their purchase and then leaves um back to your question on the traffic study we have signed a contract with green international affiliates and uh, they'll be working on a traffic study for us. And that is part, uh, the town requires that for the- um, Is there an the, ecological impact study as well for the adjacent watershed areas that are there or no? I don't know. That's not, that's not me, that's the builder. Got it. So. Anyone else? All right, well. Thanks for everybody for coming. And uh, I mentioned where you can find me if you need me. Thank you.